and welcome back to otaku no video as always thank you so much for joining me where today i am reviewing interviews with monster girls an anime series from 2017 with a rather unusual premise uh, it is about a high school teacher who is fascinated with this uh phenomenon of what we call what are called demis in this anime series Demis are people who are born with the traits of classic monsters. In other words, you may be born as a vampire. You are you are compelled to drink blood and such things. Uh, or you could be a Yuki Ona, a traditional Japanese um, uh, demon woman, if you will, who can make things cold around you. In the world of the anime series, though, Demis are being treated as though their powers are simply problems they are born with, as issues they have to deal with. Um, it is, they are effectively disabilities. And the show is about him talking to these characters. As it turns out, three of the girls in the high school that he teaches at um, are demis. One is a Yuki Ona, a, a snow girl. One's a vampire. And one is a Duhalan, or a headless horseman. Uh, and actually, there's a teacher who is... Um, uh, a succubus, as it turns out, and works very hard to... Well, anyway. So, on the one hand, this is clearly a light comedy. This is about a guy interacting with these girls who all have different personalities, um, and uh, he's kind of gonna get, getting to know them um, more over time. It's, a, it's fundamentally a comedy. There's a little bit of drama throughout the course of the series, not really any character development. There's a little bit of character development in there. Um, but the, the focus is definitely on a, this school life comedy. The twist is this element of demis. Now, some people have seen demis as a metaphor for alternative sexualities. Um, I don't think that's true because... Um, the way they're presented, being a demi comes with fundamental physical disadvantages. You know, um, it's not just you're different. It is this causes me significant problems um, that I have to deal with as myself. It's not a social, it doesn't, it doesn't create social problems. It creates, you know, specific internal um, dis, um, um, complexities for me that are not true for other people. So that doesn't quite seem like it maps onto sexuality very well. Uh, it does map on very well to somebody who, you know, doesn't have an arm or um, can't use their legs or um, you know, otherwise has a, a more direct, um, you know, physical or even uh, potentially mental uh, disability or whatever term we're using the, at the point that you, you watch this. Now, as I said before, this is mostly a series about these characters interacting. Um, and the, these, these sort of light situations that they get into. That said, um, there is, without getting into spoilers, a nice amount of, of dealing with the dark side of having these, these abilities and problems. Um, and they delve into the fact that on the one hand, you shouldn't treat somebody who has um, a problem like this as somebody you know completely weird and as somebody to be avoided but at the same time also you can't just treat them as though they don't have this particular aspect of them at all right you don't just ignore this aspect of them this is part of how god made them so to speak um and it's in there just enough to make you think a little bit and to reflect on the elements of these characters and on the elements of these you know, disabilities um, without getting in the way of the more fun aspect of, of the characters and how they're interacting and, and the personalities uh, between all of them. So I think that was, was done very well. Um, it also helps that this is a very smoothly animated series. They do a, an excellent job of measuring out their animation and making sure that sure there are conversational scenes where it's basically just a static image and lip flaps moving but especially with a vampire girl who's very energetic a very genki girl she 
has a lot of animation behind her. You know, she's moving around a lot, and she has a lot of of, of neat aspects to her personality and to the way she moves her body that I think uh, really works very, very well. Uh, they also do some fun stuff, as, as you're seeing in here, with uh, her um, uh, her face and her, her facial expressions. She does a lot of fun uh, facial reactions, which uh, work out very well for those, those uh, uh, for that character. So I was very impressed for a, again, um, situationally simple story where you don't have to have a lot of complex animation. It's not an action story. This does a, a very good job of, of, of doing that. And it also, impressively, uh, does not overly sexualize the characters. Um, there are, you know, one or two shots of a girl, you know, um, in a bathtub, things along those lines. But, you know, they're high school girls and they're treated that way. There's, there's even a moment, again, not getting to spoilers, where they make it clear that this high school teacher who's spending all of his time with these girls, he absolutely has no physical or romantic, romantic attraction to them. It's just, no, because they're high schoolers. Like, nope, that's, no, we're not going there at all. Which, I did appreciate that they at least acknowledge that. Um, overall, the direction in interviews, while effective, doesn't really stand out. Um, I found myself looking at it and thinking, they could probably think of a, of a more interesting camera angle here. Um, they could probably, you know, push this a little bit further. That said, there are several sequences where I was impressed at what they didn't show, where you see characters, you know, somebody saying something that, eh, might piss somebody off and you don't see the other person's reaction. You very deliberately don't see their face. You have to think about what, how they'd react to that. Uh, so th there is definitely thought put into the editing and the, um, uh, the cinem cinematography, if you will, of the show. Um, but it's certainly not a standout aspect of the show. It's not something that will uh, blow people away for, for years to come. Now, this kind of show lives and dies on its characters, and I thought they did a really good job of assembling a fun group of characters. The vampire girl, as I mentioned, is very energetic and definitely kind of the life of the show. The uh, Yuki Ona is a girl who is I'm trying to sort through things. She's certainly the most quiet of the group, and as such, she blends in quite a lot. But she also has arguably the most significant physical um, problem with her abilities. So there's a lot of time spent on how she kind of deals with just um, uh, her abilities. And the Duhalan is um, also actually a little bit quiet. And this is actually, if, if there is a downside to the show, it is that the, the teacher has an excellent relationship with the characters. He wants to know what's going on in their lives. He is very, you know, um, he spends a lot of time with them and is obviously committed to make, making sure they're growing up well. But he, he also has very clear boundaries on how he should interact with them. Um, and then the vampire girls, again, um, getting in a, a lot of, not a lot of trouble, but she is definitely the center of, of things going on. Most of the other characters don't really have much to do. So the show doesn't ever feel boring, but it is very clear that there is not too much more to explore with these characters once you get to the end of the season. I'd love to see a season two of the characters, but they've kind of explored the depth of them so far in this show. Um, and I think it's just one of the, the, the aspects of this kind of show. You're just not going to have a, um, anything massively complex when you have that kind of structure. Um, again, a little disappointing to me, but I think just it's a thing they went with. Now, I often like to talk about believability when it comes to anime, and I think this is a, a show where that's really helpful to, uh, to, to, to deal with, because I was impressed at how the show made it feel like characters with these abilities living in normal, modern Japan felt reasonable. I felt myself part of their reality very easily. These powers and abilities felt like they were just things. They were just, again aspects of these characters' personalities they just happen to be born with. Kind of like the X-Men, if you will, but much less grand, and that's a nice thing, is that um, their abilities in general are much less obvious, the Duhalans being the big example. So, 
they sold this very odd premise quite, quite well throughout the course of the series. There are quite a few sequences where you see how, other, how the other characters react to these characters. Um, and it feels like how anyone would react to somebody who's, you know, you know, in a wheelchair or somebody who, you know, has a, a, a you know, um, uh, you know, has a patch over one eye or whatever, where that is obviously something that you notice and it felt real. It felt like, you know, normal life, um, despite the fact that you have a character with, with her head in her hands, which is kind of weird. Uh, the voices in general in the show are solid. Um, didn't have any real problems with any of them. The vampire girl, I thought, did a very good job of being energetic. She has a, a lot of emotional range throughout the course of the show, which I think she handles in general pretty well. The, the more serious stuff is, um, you know, wasn't as obvious or as deep. Most of the, the voice actors in this, uh, with the exception of the teacher, uh, they could be their normal selves, but when the show asked them to be very different from their normal selves, there wasn't a lot of, of surprising depth or complexity there, right? Um, and the teacher is, he doesn't have a lot of, of strong emotional reactions to things. You know, he's just not that kind of person. So um, he is able to have kind of more of an emotional range because his, his midpoint is so calm that when he goes out, you really feel it and you, you really... Um, notice when he is feeling frustrated or feeling upset for somebody, things along those lines. So I think he did a very good job of that. Especially, you know, it's hard to be calm and, and be uh, reserved for an entire anime series. Um, so that is interviews with, with Monster Girls. As you can see, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It is a light school life comedy. Um, I wouldn't go into it for anything more than that. If you've heard people talking about how, oh, it's this, you know, it's dealing with disability, if you will. I don't think that is a really helpful way to go into the the series. To expecting it to, to expect it to really dive into that in any detail. Um, this is a fun show, and I think it it should be taken on that level. And, um, but, but I think across the board, they did a very impressive job with all the different elements of making sure that nothing drags you down. Nothing felt like it was, like, like it undercut the message or undercut the story and the characters and so forth. I'm, it's hard. I was, I was about to say I'm impressed. I think that is a bit of an overstatement. Um, this is a... This is a candy bar, even even more accurately. This is a really, really good hard caramel, something made by a confectioner um, that has complex flavors. You know, caramel can 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 have these nutty flavors and can can have this complexity to it, um, but it's still caramel, right? It's not a fulfilling meal. Go into it from that perspective, and I found myself fully satisfied that they did exactly what should be. So, hope you find that helpful. See you again.